Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well and waiting for another video on Space News. So, your wait is over because I have come back with another crazy week of Space World updates. In today's video, we will tell you about something that SpaceX intends to install on Mechazilla Tower. Curious to know, right? Let's find out. Before we start, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button so that you will never miss anything from the Space Niche News. Let's not waste a second and move on. SpaceX Mechazilla. Why is it named that? Mechazilla is the name Musk has given to the launch tower next to the Starship launch pad. The pad is located at the firm's Starbase facility in Texas, where it aims to host the rocket's first ever orbital flight later this year. In April 2021, Musk explained on Twitter that if it had some legs, it would resemble Mechazilla. This is most likely a reference to the Mecha Godzilla character from the Godzilla movie franchise, which first appeared in the 1974 film Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. Musk, of course, is well known for including references to science fiction in his company's products. SpaceX Mechazilla, what does it do? Launch towers for rockets are nothing new. NASA explains that the fixed service structure at the Kennedy Space Center's launch pad 39A, used for rockets like the SpaceX Falcon 9 and NASA Space Shuttle, measures around 347 feet from the ground to the top of the lightning mast. It features three swing arms for access to a shuttle space on the pad. It's ideal for emergency exits for astronauts. But SpaceX is thinking bigger with the Mechazilla. In December 2020, Musk claimed that the firm planned to use the launch tower's arms to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returns to Earth. The booster will likely use two pins for lifting and catching. Musk noted that maybe it's better to modify grid fins to take more load, suggesting the plans are still in motion. The ship would sport something to flip out of the leeward side of the ship. Musk added that it's maybe it's part of forward flaps, but probably not. Tank treads on the arms will slide the booster out to line up with the orbital launch pad, ready to fly again. The plan marks a sharp departure from SpaceX's other rocket reuse efforts. For the semi-reusable Falcon 9, the first stage booster either returns to Earth on a land-based launch pad or an autonomous drone ship in the sea. The rocket fires its engines during descent to come to a stop on the pad. So why not do that then? Because, as Musk suggested on August 13th, using the tower to catch the booster and ship means that neither of them needs landing legs to support themselves as they return. The Starship will only require legs for missions that land on Mars or other planets until there is local infrastructure. Note that the Falcon 9 boosters used their legs to support themselves as they came into land on those drone ships. The company has installed the first arm on what amounts to the backbone of Mechazilla. At the end of July, after less than four months of work, a team of SpaceX workers and contractors installed the final prefabricated section of a 145-meter, 475-foot tall tower meant to support orbital Starship launches. Above all else, SpaceX's first custom-built launch tower is a sort of backbone or anchor point for several massive mechanical arms that will accomplish the actual tasks of servicing and perhaps catching Starships and Super Heavy boosters. Work on all three of the arms expected to make up what SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has described as Mechazilla has been visibly underway since the last week of June as a small army of welders carefully assembled dozens of sections of heavy-duty steel pipe into house-sized frames. Almost exactly two months later, SpaceX has installed the first of those three arms on the exterior of Starship skyscraper-sized launch tower. Known as the tower's quick disconnect or QD swing arm, the standalone structure is reportedly designed to accomplish a few different tasks. First, its unofficial name might suggest the QD arm will hold a quick disconnect umbilical connector that will temporarily attach to the base of Starship to load them with fuel, oxidizer, and other consumables and link them to the ground power and networking. 
Enter the building-sized robot, informally known as Mechazilla. While the relatively simple swinging QD arm will feel Starship and stabilize both stages of the rocket, as is commonly a feature of rockets and launch pads, the only experience SpaceX itself has with umbilical swing arms is the crew access arm, the CAA, that allows astronauts and cargo to board Dragon spacecraft after Falcon 9 goes vertical, a structure with near zero umbilical utility. Technically, the transporter slash erectors that cradle Falcon 9 rockets, lift them vertically and feel them before launch, have some similarities with swing arms, but SpaceX has always used simpler and more reliable passive mechanisms whenever possible. A step further though, SpaceX has also seemingly forgone the installation of a basic crane on top of its Starship Tower. And Musk himself has developed an almost infamous aversion to the inclusion of something as seemingly simple as landing legs on super heavy boosters, and eventually, perhaps even some Starship variants. Instead of adding rudimentary legs to Super Heavy's prototypes, Musk has seemingly pushed SpaceX to turn Starship's launch tower into a complex, vulnerable, and fragile rocket recovery system. Beyond the comparatively mundane QD arm, Musk says that SpaceX will ultimately install a pair of massive house-sized steel arms mounted on a sort of external elevator. Those arms will be capable of actuating and moving up and down the tower with speed, precision and reliability needed to quite literally catch super heavy boosters and eventually starships out of mid-air. The team tasked with designing and building those rocket catching arms have affectionately deemed them chopsticks, a nod towards the kind of nuanced actuation they'll need to recover the world's largest rocket boosters and upper stages without missing or destroying them. Having only just perfected propulsive vertical landing with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters, SpaceX thus intends to throw a few extra points of failure into the mix. To SpaceX and Musk's credit, whether the company's second attempt at catching rockets goes as well as the first, some version of the massive chopstick arms SpaceX is working on was likely going to be necessary just to rapidly turn around boosters and starships, and do so regardless of weather conditions. By replacing a tower crane with giant arms, SpaceX will hopefully be able to stack Starship on Super Heavy and Super Heavy on the launch mount, even in the high winds that are almost always present on the South Texas Gulf Coast. If SpaceX can also reliably catch boosters with those arms, it could be a significant upgrade to the operation side of Starship reusability. For now though, only time will tell. That's all for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.